I'm John Beeman. We're on the ice at Lake Superior in the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore in Wisconsin. We're going to explore this winter landscape on dog sleds. And what you're looking at is one of the oldest ways to travel in winter, and one of the best. That is, if you don't mind not being top dog. Join me as we make our own adventure on Trailside. Up, up! Trailside is made possible in part by L.L. Bean, providing sporting gear and apparel for people who love the outdoors for over 80 years. <laughs> and by Chevy Trucks. Next time you're having fun outdoors, make sure Mother Nature has a good day, too. And High Tech Sports, who invite you to enjoy the great outdoors and follow the trail to adventure. This is Bayfield, Wisconsin, gateway to the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. Now, early explorers named the islands after the 12 apostles. They must have miscounted. There really are 22 islands, forming a wonderful archipelago that stretches from the western shore of Lake Superior. Now, taking a dog sled out on this frozen lake will give us a good taste of what travel is like in the Arctic, some 2,000 miles north of here. And Paul Shirky, a veteran cold weather explorer, has made many trips to the Arctic. And one of those was the first unsupported dog sled expedition to the North Pole since Admiral Perry did it in 1909. Hi, Paul. Morning, John. Well, we better get these dogs harnessed up before we wake up the whole town. Okay, can you show me how you do it? Sure, we'll get your real dogs in harness and then we'll take off. Okay. Let me show you how we harness the dog. This is a dog named Venus. And first I'll gain control by squeezing him gently with my knees. Mm -hmm. You take your harness, and you've got leg loops here and a collar, and you slide those together right over his nose. Okay. And slip a leg over either loop. Make sure the collar is out in front of the harness. Mm -hmm. Venus is all set to go. I'll let you try your luck on the last dog there. You know, I've always sort of thought of dog sledding as being something that only happened up in the uh, Yukon or Alaska. But yeah, it, it used to be that way, but you know, it's become popular all over the lower 48. In fact, some people use carts so they can run their dogs in places that don't have snow. Huh. I think I got it. Great. All right, we'll bring them up to the sled, and in fact, it's appropriate to put them in two-wheel drive here. Just lift them off by their harness. Makes it a little easier to control them. They're pretty anxious to get going. Let's see. Yeah, they absolutely love to pull. These two dogs are going to go nearest the sled in what we call the wheel position. Well, why do you call it the wheel position? Well, just like the uh, fifth wheel on a fire truck, traditionally dogs in this position are trained to swing wide around corners so you wouldn't catch the obstacles there. Okay. So you clip them uh, to the harness and then up front here, use this neckline to attach their collar. Okay. There you go. So that holds them right close to right. the cable. And in the middle here, these dogs are in a position called the swing position. Mm -hmm. We'll hook them up here. They'll just provide a little extra power for us today. And of course, out front on the business end, we've got our lead dog. And this is a dog named Plug. Mm -hmm. He's a veteran race dog and in fact has been on the famous Alaska Iditarod race twice. So that's where all the brains are in this team? That's right, and that's the dog that will respond to your commands. And what we use to command the dogs, to get them started, we say all right. Uh -huh. To go to turn right, we say G, and to turn left, we say haw. G and haw, okay. And the sled G. looks pretty simple. Yeah, it's a very elegant design that has uh, evolved over hundreds of years of use. And it's done largely with lashing, so the sled has lots of give and flexibility for it. Mm -hmm. On the now, back here. Where's the steering wheel? Well, there's no steering wheel. You'll find the steering is a matter of shifting your balance. 
Okay. And you're going to perch a foot on that runner. All right. Hands go up here on the bar. And here's a very important piece of equipment. That's our brake. Uh -huh. But you have to step down on very firmly to bring these anxious dogs to a halt. Okay, stomp on that one really well. Exactly. Well, well, I thought we'd take a couple of practice runs. Okay. And then we'll head out from here to Basswood Island. Okay. And that's, that's right out there? Yeah, yeah, it's just a little over a mile. There's some great spots to camp. Okay. How long do you think it'll take us to get there? Oh, Let's we'll go fast going. today. Didn't take long at all. Okay. So we just pull up these anchors? Yeah, we'll pull up our snow hooks, which serve as parking brakes. Okay. Oh, they're ready to go. They huh? sure are. Didn't even give them a command yet. They're ready to jump. Oh, you want me to give them the call? I'll let you do the honors. All right. <laughs> Great. You just push with your foot like that? Yeah, with your outside foot. Use that as a pivot point. Okay. Give it an occasional kick and also to maintain your own balance with. Okay. And that assists you with steering the sled and keeping it upright. It's a pretty narrow sled, but it's, you know, it's fairly stable. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a little tougher, too, people on here, but... And in the deeper snow now, of course... It slows down. To, yeah, and pay a little extra attention to your balance. How much weight will these dogs haul? What else pull three, four hundred pounds on a sled like that? Oh, God. Let me stop here. I'd like to check the ice one more time. Okay, let's do it. All right. You guys are going to love being out on the ice today. Experts can recognize dozens of different kinds of ice with evocative names like candle ice, frazzle slush, even black ice. No matter what it's called or how it's formed, the obvious bottom line for winter travel is that the ice has to be thick enough to support you and your gear. Now, a good rule of thumb is that two inches will support one person and three inches will support one person and even a dog team. How thick is it, Paul? Well, probing with this harpoon assures me we've got at least two inches and the ice fisherman tell me there's more than eight out here. Eight inches? Yeah. Well, eight inches will support a family car. But remember, if you're ever in doubt, don't go out. Well, it's been a pretty cold winter. That probably means the ice is going to stay pretty thick all the way through. Yeah, but you know, a lot of things can affect ice besides temperature. Uh -huh. Heavy snowpack may fracture it, currents may weaken it, and windstorms will create pressure ridges like this. And with a midwinter thaw, conditions can change overnight. Well, have you ever fallen through the ice? Well, just once, and I was very lucky. I happened to have a pair of long screws in my pocket that I was able to use for grabbing the ice and pulling myself back out again. Mm -hmm. I learned then how important it is to always carry something sharp. Ski poles will work, so will car keys, but uh, your, your best insurance may just be a set of these. Oh. Simply long dolls with nails on the end that can be used for reaching out and grabbing the ice. Mm -hmm. So the way you use them if you fall through is you just put them in your hands and go like this? Exactly. They may save your life. Well, that's a pretty handy little thing. Yeah, and you, put, you put the corks on there so that uh, it doesn't yeah. cut into you if you got it in your pocket? Yeah, why don't you hang on to those? I've got more in my pack. I think I will. Well, you want to go put some gear on the sleds and head on out to the island? Yeah, let's do that. about this for a camp, Paul? Yeah, it's just like a uh, good spot. We're at the leeward side of the point here and uh, plenty of firewood. All right. Well, let's get the dogs tied up and head in. Great. All right, boys, let's bring her home. All right. Ready? Let's go. Up, All right. Up. When you camp in winter, you're dealing with extremes. There's bone chilling cold and shorter days on the one hand in brilliant clear nights and a wonderful sense of solitude on the other. But you're working harder to keep yourself warm and dry. Now the key to comfort in winter is paying attention to your body's temperature. You want to get yourself warm before you get too cold and cool down before you get too wet from sweating and breathing. For instance, well before arriving at camp, I made a point of opening up my windshield to release any moisture that might have been trapped inside before stopping. And when you arrive at camp, pay attention to your personal needs first and the dogs later. They've already got their winter coats on. 
I like to adjust my layers again. And that means taking off my windshell and putting on a warm down parka. Now let's go see how the dogs are doing. All right, Snow White, let's get you out of that harness and put you to bed for the night, huh? These dogs be okay tied out all night? Oh yeah, they sleep just fine out here in the snow. And they feel secure, each with their own spot along this line here. Uh -huh. I'll put Snow White right here on the end. Well, what do you check for at the end of a long, hard day of pulling to make sure the dogs aren't, uh, aren't hurt or something? Well, one of the things you might check is for dehydration. You do that simply by grabbing a clump of their hide, uh -huh. and it should snap right back. Okay. If it doesn't, it may mean they're not getting enough fluid. Well, she looks plenty hydrated. Another thing we might check for would be any, any tenderness on the pads of their feet. Uh -huh. And if that proved to be a problem, we might put a booty on them the next day. Okay. Say, <laughs> did I introduce you to this fellow? No. Interesting dog. He has the Eskimo name Kautuk, a mm -hmm. word meaning big toes. Oh, for obvious reasons. Too. Right. And he uh, came from an Eskimo family where we would use him for hunting up in the high Arctic. Hunting in the Arctic? What are they hunting for up there? Oh, polar bear? Right. I bet he's got some stories to tell. Okay. So what do you feed these guys? Well, you know, these really are like Olympic athletes. And they do require a very special diet. Some mushrooms will feed them a meat mix. Mm -hmm. Out here on the trail tonight, I'll be giving them a very high-calorie uh, dry food. Yeah. But you know, they'll also need some uh, water. Oh, I get it. Okay, I'll go get the water. All right, great. You ready for a meal? You get the tea? And good job today there. Now this is an auger. It's a shortcut through eight inches of ice. Now these northern lakes seem clean enough to drink. You'd think water this cold would kill just about anything harmful. But in fact, the cold has very little effect on bacteria and other microorganisms that might be in the water. So you want to be careful. Now, water filters will probably freeze up in this cold. So your next best bets are chemical treatments and boiling. For chemical treatments, you want to allow a little extra time in the cold for them to take effect. And if you're boiling, allow three to five minutes. Now, a hole in the ice up here is a meal ticket as well. I've got my state fishing license and these handy gadgets called tip-ups that let you fish more than one hole at a time. And while you're waiting for that, you can be doing more than one job, like watering the dogs. Oh, hi, little guy. There we go. On a dog sled trip, you begin to understand what makes a good dog and what makes dogs pull together as a team. It's a matter of breeding and training. On the drive up here, we stop by and pay a visit to someone who knows a lot about both. My little guy. <laughs> We're in Brimson, Minnesota, getting a royal welcome from the sled dogs of Kathleen Anderson. Hi there, Coyote. How you doing? Oh. Kathleen has worked on the sled dog racing circuit up here and breeds and trains sled dogs for recreational mushing in the North Country. Hey Kathleen, what are you cutting there? Oh, well, we've got some chicken here. It's a really a uh, high protein, high fat diet for my dog. Oh, Willow. Yes, Boy. you like that, don't you? Yes, good girl. Yeah. Well, what are some of the secrets to raising good sled dogs? Well, it's really important to socialize them when they're young like this, uh -huh. up to 12 weeks. and. You need to work with each dog as an individual, uh -huh. and you need to have a lot of patience when you're working with sled dogs, especially when they're young like this. They they really need to be worked well with. Hey, it's puppies! Not hard. Hi. They're cute and cuddly, aren't oh, they? Oh yes! Come on, guys! I like to get them used to uh, having a harness on when they're young like this. Uh -huh. I like to uh, get them used to working as a team, yeah. working together. And uh, these guys are pretty young, so I don't put a lot of pressure on them. Now, it doesn't hurt them to be pulling a sled at this age? Well, they won't really be pulling. It will be helping them out quite okay. a bit. You just get them used to kind of being in a line? And... Yep, yep. They okay. really have a, a natural desire to pull that's that's uh -huh. been bred into sled dogs. Hi, Willow. That's a good girl. Okay. Hi, Blue. Well, if you want to go stand back with the sled. Okay, do you want me to puppy, give them a puppy, signal puppy, puppy. or anything? We say, hi, Kike. Oh, hi, baby. Yeah, okay. Oh, Willow. Ready? Good Hi, girl. Kike. Okay. Hi, Kike. Come on, Willow. Puppy, puppy, Hi, puppy, 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 Hi, puppies. Kike. Come on, puppies. Puppy, 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 puppy. Oh, come on. Good puppies. Puppy, puppy, puppies. Puppy, puppy, puppies. Puppy, puppy, puppies. Come on, puppies. So 
So how do you train older dogs? Well, I put them in harness like this uh -huh. and with a lead to their collar so I can teach them their commands. Yep. G for mm -hmm. right. Good girl, Petra. Ha, ha. Good girl. Yes. But I have another technique that I use. Uh -huh. Do you have a dog at home? Yeah, I've got a big old Newfoundland. Oh, great. This is one you could use. You'll like this. Okay. Put those skis on there. All right. It's called ski joring. Yeah. And I use it for my dogs because then I get a lot of one-on-one -on -one with the dog. And I also can teach them their commands. But other people can use it if they have just one dog. What happens a lot is people come here and they get to go mushing with six dogs, mm -hmm. but they can't necessarily go home and uh, buy six dogs. Right. So they can use their dog at home for that. Okay. Got the harness on. Yep. This is called a quick release. Ah. Put it in like this. How come I have a feeling I'm going to be using this? Yeah, you better check it out. All Pull right. back. There you go. Okay. Just in case you, you know, need to... Let go of the dog. All right. Do a face plant or something here. Okay. Okay. Let's hope not. <laughs> this goes to the harness of the dog. Right. We tell the dog, stay tight. Good girl, Petra. Stay tight, Petra. Stay tight. Good stay tight, girl. Petra. All right. Now be okay, nice. Okay, now be what's nice the word to, to go? Hike, hike. Hike, hike. All right. Hike, hike, hike Petra. Hike, hike. Let's Petra. go. Hike, hike. Good girl. Hike, hike. Good girl. Hike, hike. Hike, hike. Hike, hike. Hike, hike. Hi, Kirk. While campfires are generally discouraged under most circumstances, winter campsites are so seldom used that you won't be depleting the deadwood sources for other campers, and there's very little risk of forest fire. But it gets dark early, so you want to be gathering your firewood while there's still plenty of daylight. You'll need three basic components. Tinder, kindling, and firewood. Now we use a fire pan on top of three dead logs to ensure that the fire burns completely and there's no visible trace. We also build the fire well back from any hard surfaces so that there's no risk of scarring the rock faces. Now to begin building your fire, you wanna take your kindling in finger-sized pieces and make a small teepee. Tuck your tinder inside. In this case, our tinder is some bark from a dead tree. Then using waterproof matches, just light your tinder and you gradually feed in increasingly larger pieces of kindling until you get a good solid fire. When the fire is going real well, you take your firewood and you lay it around the perimeter log cabin style. Now you want to take plenty of time and build a real nice solid fire when you're winter camping. Because when you are winter camping, you're going to be spending as much time around the campfire at night as you will traveling during the daytime. And on a cold winter night, there's nothing that makes the winter camping experience happen as well as a good warm fire. So gather plenty of firewood and sit real close. You're not going to believe it, but that trout I filleted a few hours ago, it's almost frozen already. Hey, fish sticks. Let's add it to the stir fry. Great, that will be good in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, winter camping, I should take things like these fresh frozen vegetables. You probably wouldn't have these in the summer out here. No. Dog sledding lets you bring all the luxuries of home. You even got a little stool. Here you go, Paul. Hey, thanks. That looks comfortable. You even get to bring a nice big skillet, and what's this, you even brought a reflector of them, huh? Yeah, I thought we'd try making some gingerbread here while our dinner cooks. Oh, that's great. Those things really magnify the intensity of the fire, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it should take about an hour and we'll have ourselves a little cake. Good. Yeah, in the meantime, this nice hot fire. Yeah. Bring a little focus to our evening. Give us time to share some stories. Yeah. In fact, you know, I think I've got some North Country classics. I've got a Jack London here someplace. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Or better yet, I think I remember a little Robert Servant. Oh, no, you're not going to do the cremation of Sam McGee. <laughs> I haven't done that since Boy Scouts. There are strange things done beneath the midnight sun yep. by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic the trails have secret tales that will make, make your blood, blood run, run cold. The, the northern, northern lights have seen queer sights, but the, the queerest they ever did see was the night the on the marge of Lake LaBarge when I cremated Sam McGee. <laughs> I haven't been driven to abstraction by any more Paul's poetry. I'm trying to work hard to get my circulation going, build up some body heat. 
That'll warm up the air in my sleeping bag. Well, we brought our tent, and we could have built a snow shelter, but you know, when you're dog sledding, you're going with your own Pullman car. Now, the dog sleds are elevated off the ground, but we still use a closed cell foam pad under our sleeping bags to give us some good insulation from the cold. And our bags are down filled and rated to minus 30. We figure it's only gonna to get to about minus 10 tonight, so we've got plenty of margin. Any other tips, Paul, before we turn in for sleeping in the cold? Well, you'll want to wear both your liner gloves and your hat to bed. Yeah. You can leave your boots outside, but it's a good idea to take your heavy mitts and uh, stuff them in the top to flare your boots out wide. They'll be a lot easier to get into then in the morning when they freeze up. Uh-huh. And avoid the temptation to pull your head down in that bag and breathe in there. Oh, you yeah. know, our, our breath gives off nearly a pint of moisture every night. Yeah, that's right. In fact, on my... Uh, Two months dog sled trek to the North Pole, my sleeping bag gained nearly 60 pounds in weight just from ice. 60 pounds? Yeah. They're as stiff as plywood. Boy, that's, some, that's a lot of... We sure don't want that to happen on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a little reading here before I turn in. Okay. Well, we've still got 110 miles to cover up here in the trail system of Apostle Islands. And we're going to head over to the sea caves in Squaw Bay tomorrow. Now I think I'll just do a little read of my own and turn in. Hey, John. Hey, Paul. Boy, you know, it's a lot more exercise out here in the woods than it is on the ice. Now I know why they call this a combination between surfing and rototilling. Yeah, sometimes there's a lot more to it than just hopping out and seeing mush. In fact, Occasionally in deep snow, we'll have to get off front and break trail for the dogs with snowshoes. It kind of defeats the purpose of the dogs, doesn't it? No, no. Just let them know we're part of the same team. Let's go, dogs. Ha! Hup, hup, ha! Let's go. Any tips for hills, Paul? Yeah, lean into the oh, corners hup, and ride hup. your brakes. So you don't overtake the dogs. Hup, hup. Hup. Let's go. Hup, hup. Okay, good dog. So how are these caves formed? Well, the forces of wind, waves, and ice have sculpted these sandstone cliffs for miles. Uh -huh. Who knows how many caves have yet to be discovered? You know, a lake that's huge really does have the power of an ocean. In fact, they call it the uh, Inland Sea. Yeah. Boy, I'd love to come back here in the summer in a sea kayak. You could paddle right up into these. It's another great way to visit this area. But for now, we're going to turn our sleds towards home and head on back to base camp. There's still a lot of ground to cover in this Northwoods winter wilderness. And with dogs that live to pull, it's really accessible to anyone who knows their G's from their haws. See you next time on Trailside. All set, Paul? Okay. Ready, boys? Let's go. All right. Let's go. The home video of this program, as well as other programs in the Trailside series, is available for $19.98 plus shipping and handling by calling 1-800-TRAILSIDE. The videos include behind-the-scenes footage of the making of the program, as well as additional Trailside tips and techniques. To order, please have your credit card ready and call us at 1-800-872-4574. Next episode of Trailside, John Veeman tries fly fishing in Wyoming. That's Tuesday, December 13th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, right here on TSN.